my uh, sport uh, background host here is getting you got so much energy. It must be much earlier. No, no, this is this is just uh, the way I I get when I when I get a cold, I get a little bit loopy. So, um, although some people wouldn't would like to point out that this is my normal too. So I I, I think just the loopiness and the tiredness are kind of complicated for each other. And add caffeine to the mix, and I'm pretty much insane. Um, so yeah. Uh, so we have Adam Gordon Bell here. Hello, Adam. <laughs> Hello, how's it going? I like your energy, man. I think it's great. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so I, I have to say that I'm geeking out a little bit about this because I love sorting algorithms and, 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 uh, yeah, I want to know how this works. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So I will bring up your presentation here if you are ready to roll. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Take it away, Adam. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you said, uh, Jason, that you like sorting algorithms and stuff, because I'm going to be talking exactly about that. I, kind of I want to share a story about investigating a, a mystery. So I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey. We'll learn a little bit about sorting and about performance and Python, of course, and a little bit of C code. Um, so I was sitting at my standing desk, as I tend to do, because I'm lazy. And um, I was looking for a solution to a problem, which was uh, merging sorted lists in Python. I was putting together this example code for Earthly, which is an open source build tool that I work on. And um, like really, the code that I put together didn't matter too much, because I was more showing off the build process. It's like a, a proof of concept type of thing. But I mean, I also like sort algorithms and stuff like that. So I, I started to, you know, just implement some different algorithmic ideas as some example Python code in, in this build. But then I got stuck on this idea uh, of merging sorted lists. <clears throat> so I don't know if anybody else is familiar, but if you if you have two lists and they're sorted, and you want to make a new list that's also sorted from them, like there's a, a couple ways to do it, right? Then the simplest way is to just shove them, shove those two into a new list and resort that list, right? But, but, uh, oh, I, I warn you, I'm going to talk a little bit about algorithm, algorithmic complexity and like big O notation in this talk, but it, it won't be too scary, I promise. So if you, if you resort that list, um, even if you have a really great sorting algorithm, it takes a uh, n log n time in the worst case. So it, it takes more than a linear number of steps to do that. But there's a, a trick to do it better, which is merging these sorted lists. So I'll, I'll show you an example of how that works, right? So here um, I have my two lists. I have a list with two, three, four, five, and I have a list with one, four, 10. And then this is just the, the end marker of the list, right? And so I want to produce a new list that, that's also sorted. So instead of throwing them in a list and resorting it, I can just do the following, right? I start at the beginning of the, each list, and I see which element is the smallest. And then I just add that to my new list, which I'm placing down here, and then cross out that item, like take it off the list, basically. And then I can just keep doing that. So then I would do my next test check two versus four, two smaller. So I pull that down, cross that off. And I just keep working and working through this list until I've removed every element. And then I'll have a new sorted list down here, right? And the, the nice thing about this is it's faster than resorting because it takes advantage of the fact that my initial lists were already sorted. So every time I compare two elements, I add a new element to my list. So it, it ends up being linear linear time, which is O to the N in uh, uh, algorithmic complexity. So it only takes as many comparisons as I have elements in my final list, which is faster than sorting things, right? So I, I whip up some code for this. It looks something like this. So my method is called merge sorted lists. I take in two L1 and L2, and I have a result list sorted list. And I basically just loop through it each time comparing my list and seeing which one has the lower items, right? If, if the lower item is in L1, 
then I remove L1 from the list and I add it to my sorted list. If L2 is lower, then I remove L2 and add it to my sorted list. And I have a um, an extra step. So like, let's say when I get to the very end of the list, like after I add five here, um, I have only one list, like my list here is empty and I just have a 10 here. So, so my final step is whatever we have left in either one of our lists, add that onto the final end. So that's my code, right? It, it makes sense. I did find out, oh, there's a bit of a faster way to do this. Instead of using pop, um, it's better to actually keep pointers as you're going and go through it. Um, but then a thought came to me, right? Like, I don't really want to own this code for merging sorted lists. Like, it was it was fun to write, maybe a little distraction. Let me put on my kind of like leet coding hat for a couple minutes. But, you know, it's not really what I want to own. I don't want to own this code. So I just decided, like, let me find a package. Like, surely there's a Python package where uh, you can merge sorted lists. And then I can just call that. That'll be much easier, right? This is just, I if I if I can not own code, I'll, I'll try not to, right? So I head to Google and I, I Google merging sorted lists. I end up on Stack Overflow. Um, and I find this uh, heap. Uh, q.merge exists. And heapq.merge does exactly um, what I'm looking for. It's it's code a lot like this, except it's more general and it can handle like any iterators. So that's awesome. I don't have to use my code. I mean, I wrote it, but uh, whatever. It's better to use something established. But then I look in the answers in Stack Overflow and I see somebody's answer that says, long story short, unless your list is how many elements i think this is a million six zeros unless your lists are more than a million elements which they're not um you should just sort it so that's kind of a weird statement to have and because it's stack overflow there's like comments below and there's people fighting about whether that's correct or not and certainly to me it seems really wrong right like as i just explained it's faster to peel off elements one by one and take advantage of the fact that it's sorted. It's way faster to do that than to, you know, just resort the whole list. So basically, I found somebody who's wrong on the internet and it's time for me to prove it to them. So now I have another tangent of a tangent. I start taking this code um comparing my this sort to the heap uh, dot merge and I can see what that's going to look like. I can pull in matplotlib and I can do a little graph and I can see um you know, that this is faster. And so that's what I do. But it doesn't work out so well. So here's my graph. Um, it's a little bit confusing, but my resorting, as recommended on Stack Overflow, is here with the triangles. And these are like this as the size of the list grow. Um, the heap merge, which does things the correct way, I'm going to say, is in the blue. And this is time going up this side. So it is always, in every case that I tested, slower um, to use the more you know, algorithmic correct way. Strange, right? This doesn't make sense to me. And you, you can see that these lines are getting closer and closer together. So probably that person was right somewhere on a long enough list. Uh, it'll actually get bigger. But this is very odd, right? I, I don't understand this. It makes me question everything I know about, about how computers work and like what Python's actually doing um, behind the scenes. So what I do is I just decide to grab some lunch, let this simmer, and uh, yeah, I go downstairs, I grab some lunch, I bring it back up to my desk, and as I'm eating, I start reading through how this works, right? And I discover that that sort method, which seems to be a lot faster than it should be, is Tim sort. And this is the commit I found. This is Tim's original commit. Uh, Tim Peters created Tim sort, and he committed it in July 1st, 2002. The commit message is kind of funny. This is actually just the a text file describing Tim sort, and he put in the in the thing here. Um, There's way too much here to stuff into code comments, and lots is going to be useful again, but it, I don't know what. So here's just a giant dump of my thoughts. Right. So I'm sitting there eating lunch, being this is this is weird. Um, and so I pull up his file that explains Tim sort and it's a, it's a text file and it's quite big and it starts off, 
you know, this describes an adaptive, stable, natural merge sort, modestly called Tim sort. Hey, I earned it. So he names it after himself. And then he says it has supernatural performance. Supernatural, not a term I'm used to people saying in association with sorts. And uh, it goes on and on. I scroll down further. By the time you get to line like 400, he introduces something called galloping. Uh, also something I've never heard of when it comes to sorting. And then it just keeps going. And then there's like galloping with a broken leg. There's various merge algorithms, merge high, merge low. There's galloping complications. <sighs> it is a lot. Tim sort is, seems a lot more complex than the kind of like quick sort and merge sort that I was used to learning about. But eventually it starts to make sense to me when I understand that Tim sort is based on merge sort. And a merge sort works like this. Um, like here I have this list, 100, 200, da, 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 da. And I, I want to sort it. And so merge sort will break it up into single elements and then it will merge those elements. And as it does, it sorts them. So it's always taking lists and joining them together uh, as it sorts them. And so if it had two chunks that were my 100, 200, 300, and this one, two, three, four, you know, it would basically do the same thing I described before. It would compare the 100 to the one, see the one's lowest, pull it down, compare the 100 to the two, see the two's lowest and pull it down and so on and so forth. As it slowly pulls all these elements in, it will sort those two merge portions and make a new sorted list. That's merge sort. Um, but what, what Tim sort has is this idea called galloping. So it, in most cases, Tim sort follows the same merge sort algorithm, except in these steps we were in here, where we're pulling in one, two, and three, four. You, you might have noticed that because this is 100 and this one has a lot of elements, we're going to just keep pulling from this one side. So we're going to compare 4 to 100. We're going to compare 5 to 100. We're just going to keep comparing um, each number in here back to 100. So Tim Sort introduces this idea. It says galloping. It says once, once I start pulling from the same side a certain number of times, like, let's say like seven times, like something is going on here there's a big gap. And so it starts galloping. It starts looking further out into this list and saying like, how far out in this list on the right would I need to go before I get to 100, right? So it starts jumping out, kind of doing a binary search, going out this way, looking uh, for bigger and bigger elements. And when it does that, it's able to skip a lot of comparisons and find that somewhere in here, right? We go from four to 100, and that whole four to 100 chunk can be moved down in one step, right? So that's a gallop. It gallops out this way, and then it pulls that in. And that means it's able to save a whole bunch of comparisons against 100, which is pretty cool. So by this time, my, my lunch is, is kind of over, and I've kind of just like drifted off into the afternoon of, of going deep on sorts. But I've learned a lot. I, I learned about Tim Peters. So this is him here. It's a picture of Tim um, at a PyCon conference where he, he did an interview. And the, the timeline of Tim Sort is kind of interesting. In 1993, somebody wrote a, a research systems paper about optimistic sorting. And it covered a lot of interesting ideas, one of which um, was galloping that we just discussed. Another one was the observation that in real world data, excuse me, like sort algorithms, we measure them using this big O notation, which is about the worst case performance. But in the real world, the worst case doesn't happen very often. And another opt uh, observation of this optimistic sorting paper was that, hey, a lot of real world data is already partially sorted. It's got some sorted chunks in it. And so it introduces this idea of like, if we can already find those pre-sorted chunks, then when we do our merge sort, we can just start with them and it will make things a lot faster. So anyways, that's an academic paper, but Tim, Tim Peters reads it. And in 2002, he introduces into C Python Tim sort. And that was that giant document that I shared. You know, he really went deep making sure that the sort was faster in all the cases that the Python developers would care about and introduced it. It worked really well. And in 2009, Java 
looked their head up at Python and said, we're going to take that as well. And so the same thing happened with JavaScript and with Swift and with Rust. And now it's to the point where in any language, when you reach for a sort algorithm, if you don't specify, you're probably getting to sort. So this is all really cool, but it still leaves me confused, right? Because here's the thing. Uh, I'm not resorting a list. Like this is cool that Tim sort beats uh, quick sort or merge sort, but I already have sorted elements. So I don't see why Tim sort this list.sort in Python should beat the performance of my merge, right? So I start digging in further. Now we're on a tangent of a, a tangent of a tangent in terms of what I was actually working on. But I find the, the code for TimSort is also in the commit. And the one thing I notice is it's all written in C or my algorithm and the heap.merge are written in Python. So maybe the issue here is actually that TimSort is faster than my merge, in part because it's it's written and runs natively in C, where this is interpreted, right? So this, uh, I put a little cartoon of me thinking about this here, but uh, this gets me thinking, right? It gives me this idea because, you know, I was working on this example for Earthly to show some Python code building, um, but I have more examples to do in the future. And one of them is building you know, a cross language. And wouldn't this be a great example? I can write some C, I can port my algorithm down and I can show how you can do great, like reproducible cross language builds in Earthly. Um, therefore, you know, chalking up all my weird tangent into digging in on sorts as like actual productive work. But also if it's faster, like people are merging sorted lists all the time in Python. And so I can put it in a package and I can release it. And then there'll be less CPU cycles, you know, based on this and you know less greenhouse gases emitted and global warming will end and people will have a parade for me and i'll save the day uh, <laughs> maybe that's a bit unrealistic but sometimes when i have an idea i get really excited about it and uh, i just want to to dive in anyways so that's what i do right i write i take my algorithm and i port it to c uh, i did actually have to reach out uh, for help with somebody else on my team who's more familiar with C, but get in the Python headers. And the code is actually not too bad. It's, it's not too much different than I thought it would be. This is something I've never done before. So it was a bit of an adventure for me. But yeah, the code here, I basically make a new list that's the size of the two input lists. And this is like my while loop from before. I pull the items off of each list using this pylist.get item and I compare them. And if it's smaller, I set it back in. It's basically the exact same thing as before. Um, down here is the, you know, when you get to the end of one of the lists, you add everything back in. Simple, right? <laughs> well, it scared me at first, but it actually worked out to be not too hard. And then once that's all built, I can just import it and call my merge algorithm. And then hopefully I'll have some faster code. Um, so I also have to put together a build for it. So this is my earth file. Uh, it's kind of like a multi-stage Docker build, but it does a great job for building these Python packages. You can see here, I'm copying in um, the setup code. This is my my merge code here, merge C, my headers, binding, build everything together. And then I have a performance uh, test, which is how I made that original graph, right? So I'm just going to call both and I'm going to actually, actually, this just prints them out, but I'm actually going to graph them out so that I can see that nice uh, graph of how it's performing. And so with that, uh, I test it out, right? And oh, it works, which really surprised me, honestly. But this um, list A plus B sort is in the blue. So you can see it's higher, but basically all sizes of lists. My merge algorithm that's also written in C um, is much faster. This gap represents saved compute time, right? So this is awesome. Maybe. I, I can actually do this. Maybe I can drop down to C and write some performant code for kind of these hot loops. Um, or at least that's what I think. Because the next thing that I do is I test another example. So here, I put together a list of ints. My previous one was a bunch of objects. I put together a list of ints, and I compare them. And you can see, if you look down here, um, I'm actually slower for a while, and then it gets kind of neck and neck even. 
And I don't know, it's it's hard to say who's the winner or the loser, but it's clear that even though Tim Sort is doing a lot more work because it's resorting the list that I am not beating it, which which is strange, right? So I'm still I'm still a bit confused about what's going on here. So, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. So I, I keep digging in, right? And I, I find in the code for Tim Sort, it has these custom compar comparators. I'm not totally sure how you pronounce that word. Comparators, let's go with. So Tim Sort has this idea. I mean, Tim worked on a lot of the internals of Python, so he, he knows this stuff well. But big O notation is about how many comparisons you're doing to sort the list, you know, comparing X to Y, how much will happen. But not all comparisons are, are made the same. In fact, like if I am comparing to Python objects, you know, it, it may be a complicated operation to tell which is bigger than the other. But if I'm just comparing to integers and they're they're just like native ints, that's very fast to compare. Same if it's floats or if it's just Latin strings. And so Tim added all these special code paths to handle special types of operations. Basically, if you're sorting a list that's all integers, it's going to be way faster than sorting a list of objects. It's going to be way faster um, to sort um, a list of all floats than it is a list of floats and ints. Because when Tim sort goes through this list looking for uh, strings that are already in sorted order, like it looks for continuous sorted elements. It also notes the types of all these things. And if the types are all of one of these base types, int, float, or string, it uses this faster code path. OK, so this kind of answers my question, right? Like, why is Tim Sort still beating me or neck and neck with me, even though it's doing more work? Because just, just to restate it, like, Tim sort is resorting everything, but I am just starting with two sorted lists, so I should have less work to do. Tim sort can go through and find that my list has two sorted, um, like it, my list is made up of two chunks, both of which are already sorted. But to do that, it has to go through the list and find them where I already have them, right? So I should be able to beat it. So I add these methods. I add custom comparisons to my merge algorithm. Um, and then I can test it again, right? So I test it again, and now we're talking, right? The world makes sense. And uh, doing a merge, I can finally beat a sort algorithm. So you can see here the specialized merge for ints I've put down here at the bottom. And it can now beat the Tim sort of that's been specialized for ints, as well as my more general uh, merge. And this works for all cases. So now, you know, this merge is beating Tim sort at merging for all cases. So it, pretty cool. It, it actually worked out. And I ran with this, right? I, I wrote it up as a blog post. I put the examples, I put it on Earthly's blog. And I said, look, Tim sort's really cool. Here's all the cool things it does. But look, I, I can beat it if you're already merging sorted elements. And when I did this, it got some attention. It was on Hacker News, you know, some people fighting about various things. But somebody interesting saw it, um, which was Tim Peters. And he reached out to me, which I thought was really cool because he obviously knows way more about all of this than me. And he said, this is great. You beat Tim Sort. But what about the galloping? Because if you remember that galloping step that I talked about at the beginning, it, it's actually during the merge part of the merge sort. And so I can use that in my merge. I could take his galloping procedure and I could make a Tim merge, uh, which would be even faster than my existing merge. Um, so I did not do that. That that was more work than I had already spent on this tangent. Um, but I wanted to share the story with everybody and say like, hey, the code is up there of this merge. And you know, if you ever are, if you're ever interested in playing around with writing some C and using it in Python, like maybe you could help me add galloping to Tim Merge. And then we could have a, a true Tim Merge, um, which would be pretty exciting. Yeah, so that was my adventure with sorting. And 
I don't know. It was fun. The, I learned a lot of things. One of them is that writing native C code is is actually not as hard as I thought it would be. Like it was it was challenging because I don't really know C, but it made it work and it was faster. Python is is pretty performant most of the times, but it's a neat skill to to drop down. Um, the other big thing I learned is just the Tim sort is really cool. T Tim Peters put a lot of thought into making it so this like common operation, just calling sort in Python, you know, really works really well and, and really is performant. So much so that all these other languages had to pull this feature in because they're like, this is amazing. Um, the other thing that I learned that I'd like to pass on to everybody else is to like pay attention to your intuition. This whole like tangent of a tangent of a tangent I had it on actually turned out being pretty fun and interesting. And I only got there because I was like, that's strange. Wait, this person's talking nonsense. And 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 I dug in and I peeled back the layers and I, I figured out what was going on, uh, which is another big lesson, right? Like, don't be afraid to dig in a little bit deeper and see what's going on underneath the covers because you can learn a lot. Uh, so that's what I'd like to pass on to everybody. Like, just don't be afraid to, to dig in there and get into the weeds. Uh, you know, it, it can be a fun adventure. And uh, that's that's all I got. I'm uh, Adam Gordon Bell. If you are interested in this, reach out to me. And uh, yeah, check out Earthly. It's pretty cool. I cannot hear you, Jason. Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. That wow. I just I I I I love that. I was I was waiting for galloping to be brought up. I was like, you should use galloping here. <laughs> First Tim would bring that up. That's fantastic. No, uh kinda gotta go faster. I love it. Um and uh <sighs> Yeah, sorry, algorithms are, are strange, but I, I'm glad you brought up the the intuition thing and it, you know, and the and the fact that implementation matters. Yeah, how you implement something actually matters. Yeah, it was interesting to me because yeah, you learn about like oh, what's the complexity of this thing, and that hides a lot of details, right? And Tim, knowing the internals of Python, was able to say like oh, we can do better. We can make the the operations faster, and he, he did a lot of cool stuff. Absolutely. We do have a question, actually. Yay. Um, uh, Mario already asked if Python recorded ranges of a sequence that were uh, invalidated on any modification, could the built in sequence.sort specialize uh, to the algorithm you're using? Or is that the galloping variant already does? Um, I don't know. I'm going to actually repost that because I was in Discord. I'm reposting that here uh, and I'm going to display it. Wow. Like that, although it's in two parts. Invalidating. Um, <laughs> the other half. Could it specialize uh, to the algorithm you're using? Well, you want. You, the, you're throwing away the fact that it is a a list. Like if you have two sorted elements and you throw it in, um, you're adding those two together. And so it needs to go back through the list to find those sequences um, where they're actually in sorted order. So you, so you just lose on that on that pass through, if that makes any sense. Um, waiting to see if. Oh yeah. Oh, hold on. He's typing. So get the response in just a second here. And um, uh, is it that that were known sorted and validated? I'm again. I'm just kind of posting this in here just to make it. Um, yeah. If I if I understand the question, which is it's totally possible. I don't. The interesting, I, you know, there's another part of Tim Sort besides the galloping which that it does a, a pass through the list to identify already sorted subsequences, right? And so part of the reason it's able to be so fast and it was so hard to beat it is because when I take two sorted sequences and combine them, I'm throwing away that they're two sorted subsequences. But Tim sort then does a pass and identifies that there actually is two sorted sequences. And then it can start the merge from there. But 
it has to do that full scan through the list to determine that. And that's how I beat it, is I don't have to do that scan because I'm not throwing away the fact that they're two sorted subsequences. Um, you know, it, 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 does, it does lead to an interesting thought randomly out of the blue, as if we ever kind of make, make, make a thing where what would happen if we instead added to the standard library the ability to pass an explicit assumption, I wonder. That would be cool. Yeah. You know, assume this is sorted. <laughs> or passes or something, something like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, that would be as much work as what you're doing. And I, I mean, yours is cool. Um, at the Galpin, that would be a blast. By the way, in case anyone, oh, um, hold on, actually. Um, we already said, in principle, I think Python could not throw away the knowledge that lists were sorted before being combined. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Um, on the topic of sorting algorithms, by the way, um, while we're geeking about Tim sort, have you heard about the other fastest? Like, there's like there's two fastest algorithms out there right now. There's Tim sort, which is especially for stable um, uh, sorting, that is, it's safe to use with linked lists. And then for unstable sorting, there's something called dual pivot quick sort. Have you ever played around with that at all? No, I'm familiar with quick sort, but yeah, so I assume dual pivot just does it too quick, like it starts with two pivots. Yeah, um, there's a paper by um, Vladimir Yaroslavinsky who developed it for Java. Um, it's a, you know, mind blowing when you wrap your head around it. So I just want to throw that out there too. Very it's cool. Like, I'm I'm curious which one would win in a race now. It's like if we did DPQS and Tim Sort, which one would actually be faster? Yeah, I know. I want to know. If anyone else has any questions for Adam, um, he will be in the Discord channel. So uh, check him out there. Thank you so much, Adam. That was fantastic. Thank you.